Hey guys, Barbara here. Let's add some more formulas and functions to your repertoire. There are a few more functions that form part of your need to know bank. Knowing how to use these functions will give you the basics you need in order to get started with your spreadsheet creation. In this video, we will be exploring the following functions, upper, lower and proper to change the case of text, max and min to find the highest and lowest values, the if function to return true and false values, the count to work out the total cells with data, the sum to calculate numerical totals, and the Google Finance formula to automatically do currency conversions. Let's get into it. Let's start with looking at where we find functions. On the top of your toolbar, you will see this icon over here. This is your Sigma icon. When you click on it, all the functions that you have access to in Google Sheets will be made available. At the top of this drop-down are your most commonly used functions, like your sum, which calculates a total, the average, the count function, which will count the amount something appears in a selected range, and your max and min functions. Let's start with the sum function. Here we have a large data set for cargo vessels. I am going to start by hiding some of the columns that we are not going to be using initially to show you how to start working with the functions. We are just removing some noise for now. Remember, if you are working in a collaborative sheet, hiding columns will hide the data for other people viewing your sheet as well, so don't hide columns while collaborating in real time. We now have the following data. We are looking at the vessel name, the size of the container, which has been captured in meter squared, and then the fee of that container. In order to calculate the total amount that will be paid, we can use the sum function. When you scroll to the bottom of the sheet, you will calculate the total container fee in column G. Activate your function using the equal sign and then type in the word sum. Google may suggest a range for you. If not, then open your brackets to choose the range. Scroll up and select your first cell and then drag your selection down to where the range ends. Alternatively, you could also type the range in manually. Be sure to close your brackets at the end and hit enter. That total sum will now be calculated. When calculating the sum, we also have the sum if function. For example, you will notice that in this data set under container size, you have a number of containers that were 40 square meters. You may want to know how much those containers only brought in. Instead of manually working that out, you can use a function like sum if. In order to demonstrate, I will do this function in this block to the right. Always start with the equal sign, then type in sum if and open your brackets. Have a look at what the help guide is guiding us to do. It says we should start with the range, so that will be where we find the container size, the 40 square meters. So we will start by selecting the first range and then use a comma to show that you are ready to move to the next bit of your calculation. Google tells us that the next thing is the criterion. Here is an example of what that criterion should look like. We will then open our inverted commas and state that we would like to sum if it equals to 40, and then close the inverted commas followed by a comma. Because we are using two different ranges, one with the container size and the other with the container fee, we will now add in the second range, which is where that calculation will be performed. Select your range and then close the brackets and hit enter. We can now see how much was charged in total for those containers only. Adding the if statements can be useful when you want to specify something. You can also use the count if function to count how many of something appear. For example, let's see how many containers are 20 meters squared. Activate your function with the equal sign and then type in count if. Open brackets, select your range, and then determine your criterion with your inverted commas, in this case equals 20. Close your inverted commas and your brackets and see how it returns that there are 12 containers with 20 meters squared. You can use your count if function for text as well. Let's count how many people have paid so far. 
activate your function and type in count if. Highlight or insert your range. Add in your comma to move on and then open inverted commas and add in your criterion. In this case, it will be paid. Close your inverted commas and close your brackets. When you hit enter now, it will show you how many people have paid. Let's have a look at how to calculate the maximum and minimum of something. We will work out what the maximum and minimum fee that has been charged for the containers are here, for example. Start by activating your function, then type in max. Notice how it tells us to now use the range in the example. Type in your range, close your brackets, and hit enter. It will now return the max of that range. Do the same with the min. Equals min, open brackets, add the range, close brackets, and your min value will be returned. Let's have a look at some other if statements. Here, we have some data where the company names and then the total revenues have been calculated for each company. We are going to use the if function here to work out some information. When you use the if function, you can return true and false values. For example, in this column, we will use the if function to calculate if the revenue that has been brought in makes this client a top client or an under target client. A top client will bring in over 3000 Rand and an under target client will be anything below that. Start by activating your function and typing in if. Open brackets and the statement we will make here is if D2 is greater than or equal to 3000, followed by a comma, it is now time to type in the true and false part of this function. True will be top client and false will be under target. Type in each of these in inverted commas separated by a comma and close your brackets. See how it now pulls through top clients for the first one? That is because the total revenue here is above 3000. If we drag this function down, you will see how it will calculate each of these automatically. You could break this down even further and use your ifs function to calculate three variables. For example, we can break this down to if a client brings in more than 3000, they are a top client. If they bring above 1500 Rand, they are an average client. And if they bring below 1500 Rand, they are a small client. Use your ifs function and type it in as seen here. If it is above 3000, return top. If it is above 1500, return mid. And if it is below 1500, return low. Close your brackets, drop your formula and see the results. See how you can use these functions in so many different ways to help you understand your data. We have a few more functions to go. The next one we will look at is upper, lower and proper case for text. Here we have a list of names. They are currently all in proper case. If I want them to be in lower case, in the column next to this one, I will type in equals lower and then select the cell and close the brackets. When you hit enter, that name will now be converted to lower case. Double click to drop the formula down. If you want it to be in upper case, type in equals upper, open brackets, and then choose the cell, close brackets and hit enter. It will now appear in upper case. Double click on the blue square to drop down the function. If you want a proper case from the lower or upper case, simply type in equals proper, open brackets, select the data, close brackets and hit enter. That text will now be converted to upper. Drop it down and just like that you are done. This will save you tons of time. The final thing we are going to look at is how to use the Google Finance function to automatically do conversions from one currency to the next using a live exchange rate. Let's start by taking note of the disclaimer below, which says that quotes are not sourced from all markets and there may be a 20 minute delay. This function should be used for informational purposes only and not for trading. This is what the function looks like. Let's unpack it. Here we have a data set where the data is being converted from US dollars, first to rands and then to the British pound. 
If I click onto one of these, see how it refers to the cell with the dollar value and then it's multiplied by the Google Finance function. And in your brackets you will notice that USD is being converted to GBP. You will need to use this shorthand when doing this type of conversion. Let's convert the dollar here to the Malawian Kwacha. I'll start by activating my function. Then we will refer to the cell with the dollar data. Bring the Google Finance function into play and then open your brackets. Now it's time to state that we are working with currency and then what those currencies are. We will be converting USD, the US dollar, to MWK, the Malawian Kwacha. Close your inverted commas and your brackets and then hit enter. Your conversion will load and that data will pull through. Drop down the formula to complete the calculations. If you want to edit the data so that it shows that this is the Malawian Kwacha visually, head to Format, down to Number, More Currencies, and then search for the Malawian Kwacha. Note that this data will change as the exchange rate changes, but there may be a 20-minute delay.